Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo de Castro and I am going to present the paper entitled Power System Real-Time Simulation Using Modelica and the FMI. This paper was co-authored by Giuseppe Laera, Fernando Facchini, Sergio Dorado, Luigi Bonfredi, Shahad Ahmed, Chetan Mishra, Kevin Jones, and Matthew Gardner for the 2022 American Modelica Conference. This presentation is divided into six parts and it explains why real-time simulations and power systems are important and how we can actually configure Modelica models to be exported as FMI to be simulated re in real-time simulators. So two test cases are going to be analyzed and we are going to discuss the simulation results as well as how we actually configure their simulation. Finally, conclusions are drawn and future works are described. So modeling and simulation are incredibly important in the study of complex systems. And therefore it wouldn't be different in the case of electric power systems. They actually led, uh, this actually led to the development of a myriad of techniques to, appropriate rep to appropriately represent and simulate uh, power grids. From hand calculations to equivalent miniatures, we have always been uh, developing such techniques. So from uh, after a time after this equivalent miniatures, uh, analog electronic integrators, they actually enabled us to, uh, uh, to create analog computers. And we use them to actually study the behavior of the emerging uh, large power systems, right? Some decades later, digital computers became consolidated and many appropriate and efficient algorithms they were developed to model and simulate power systems in a very attractive manner in terms of efficiency and cost. So in the 90s, a large effort was made to implement efficient algorithms in digital signal processors or DSPs. And this was the beginning of real-time digital simulation. This type of simulation is in fact incredibly important in the study of power systems because it enables us to test solutions before they are actually implemented in the real world, in the real power system. So nowadays, real-time solutions usually implement fixed step solvers in order to guarantee that the reading of inputs, the execution of calculations, and the releasing of outputs is done within a time step interval. When this is not possible, we say that an overrun uh, has occurred. And we should note that this does not mean that the simulation is invalid, but that that particular time step was not real-time compliant. So currently, in order to perform real-time simulations, different proprietary tools are used for offline simulations, control design, and finally, the real-time testing. This means that the same model is many times re-implemented in different tools due to a lack of portability and tractability that can be very time consuming. This is a bottleneck in this framework that should be addressed. And in this context, Modelica and the FMI standard can be used in order to facilitate model reusage for both offline and real-time simulations. In fact, this is the objective of this paper to use standardized dynamical models to improve portability and tractability of the framework used to perform real-time simulations for power systems. So in this presentation, we introduce and assess such framework while using the open IPSL to represent power systems. So the framework is basically structured in three steps. So the first step is the configuration of the Modelica model. It is assembled in, here it is assembled in Dymolum using the OpenIPSL Modelica library. And we use the Modelica standard library or MSL to add outputs to the original model. And these outputs are later used to read the variables during the real-time simulation. When I said read, uh, when I say read, I actually mean read uh, with the oscilloscope, for example. Uh, in addition, we also include uh, in the model the characteristics for the FMU, such as co-simulation setup, and the C vote solver with a determined tolerance and simulation time. And these modifications are done using equation and annotation environments within the Modelica model. 
On step two, the FMU model exported using Daimler is loaded into configuration desk. Uh, so the real outputs are assigned to output pins from the IO board, and the model is assigned to a real-time processing unit, and it is built for the real-time simulation. The final and last step is the loading of the model in a real-time application. So we use oscilloscopes to read the IO board's outputs and we simulate the model using DSpace Collection. So the first system simulated in real time is the single machine infinite bus system or SMIB. And the entire system has a set of 369 differential and algebraic equations or DAEs. And it's simulated for 20 seconds with a three phase fault applied at two seconds. The outputs are implemented as shown in listing one. And as one can see, the deviation from the nominal frequency is centered at two because IO boards do not support negative voltages. And we need to display, and that's why we actually need to, disp to displace the signal. So the second system to be simulated is the IEEE 9 bus 3 machine system, uh, system with a stat comb. And it has 476 DAEs, and it is also simulated for 20 seconds with a three phase fault applied at two. The outputs are implemented as shown in listing two. So you can see the deviation from nominal frequency in both cases uh, centered at one, while the reactive power outputs from the statcom and generators are centered at 0 0.5 per unit. And in these studies, we use the host computer that is used to control all configuration aspects needed for the real-time simulation of the, of the power system model. And this host computer is connected via Ethernet to the real-time processing unit. And the processing unit is connected to the input-output boards that allow us to perform measurements or to inject signals during the simulation. So measurement devices such as USB or regular oscilloscopes can be connected uh, to these I.O. boards for recording the measurements from the simulations. So table one here uh, summarizes the hardware characteristics for this Calexio and some simulation specifications, such as the time step used to simulate both models, which is one millisecond, and also the maximum number of overruns, overruns, which is 150. So the first system, the SMIB, is simulated in real time and presented 18 overruns during 20 seconds of simulation. The results, uh, from the digital oscilloscope are shown here. And the top results show the generator's terminal voltage in red and the deviation from nominal frequency centered at two in blue. And uh, as mentioned before, the value is centered at two because the IO board do not support negative voltage and therefore the signal needs to be displaced, which is done in Modelica model within the uh, equation environment as we showed. And the bottom plot actually shows the generator's electrical power output in red and the generator's rotor angle in blue. Uh, both quantities are shown in per unit. So uh, the second system here is the IEEE 9 bus 3 machine system, as I said, with the statcom. And it presents 109 overruns during the simulation. So the top figure displays the reactive powers from the statcom in red and from generator 1 in blue both centered at 0.5 volts in per unit. And the bottom figure just uh, depicts the frequency deviation from nominal in generator one, shown in red, and in generator three, shown in blue. And they are all centered at one, and uh, the values are shown in hertz. So another interesting analysis to be conducted concerns the overruns observing, uh, observed during the simulation. So this analysis can be done using Dymolo and the comparison between execution time and simulator time step for the SMID system is shown in the figure on the right. So it allows the engineer to understand the selection of time step and its limitations in terms of real time execution. So note that the SMID system has 369 days, a turnaround time of approximately 83 microseconds and it presents a total of 18 overruns. If we now look to the IEEE 9 bus system results, we see that it has 476 DAs, so it is 29% larger than the SMIB, but it requires an average 
uh, in average, a turnaround time of 268 microseconds, which is three times higher than the one required by the uh, SMID system. This fact is reflected in the number of overruns identified in the analysis presented in the figure on the right and observed during the real-time execution, which is six times higher than what is observed for the SMID system. So here, in this paper, we presented a framework that allows power system studies to be conducted offline and in real time using the same model, built in Modelica and exported using the FMI. This feature also allowed us to perform an overall analysis that enables the engineers to assess the selection of appropriate time steps for the real time simulation. The adoption of the framework also allows us to enhance portability and tractability in the power system modeling and simulation context. As future steps, we can highlight the possibility of parallelizing the simulation. So multiple SMUs can be used to represent different parts of the system and different cores can be assigned to perform the real time execution of these different FMUs, resulting in a much more efficient simulation. And we can also highlight the possibility of executing control hardware in the loop simulations in which the models and controllers are all designed using Modelica tools and libraries. This will certainly be another evidence of how Modelica models can be used in increasing, uh, in increasing the portability and tractability of power system models. Finally, we would like to thank Dominion Energy, uh, the Center of Excellence for NEOM Research at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, uh, or CALS, and the U.S. Department of Energy for supporting this research. Uh, thank you so much for hearing uh, to this presentation, and should you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email address in this, uh, well, listed in this slide. So thank you very much.